We got the great Lofa Tatupu in studio with us. He's agreed to take some questions. 866-979-3776, powered by Mac and Jack's Brewing Company. So we'll get to some of those questions in a bit. But uh, just quickly on, on the Super Bowl game, and I know you don't want to re relive that misery, but you said you weren't nervous out there. What what was the feeling during the game? Because before the calls were working against you, were you feeling like, we got this? Or were you feeling like, I'm not Oh, were yeah. you uncertain? What was the feeling during the game? We were all still confident on the sideline, and no one was talking about the calls. I, you know, you you would see like a, like after the game, you saw a video. Uh, I think it was my boy Ken Hamlin. Like he turned to the video because um, NFL Films or someone was right there, and he was like, "Are y'all seeing this?" And mm. um, you know, but at the, in the moment, no, you don't think you just say, "Hey, you just got to keep going." Next play, next play, and uh, but it was a. Uh, it was crazy. You know, there was only two calls that I really had issue with. Um, I mean, I, okay, three. <laughs> <laughs> ben was not in, right? Yes. You know? And, you know, even he said it. He was mic'd up, and he said it. And uh, and then the penalty where Lock, Locklear got a holding call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Casey Hampton and Clark Hagens were both offsides. And so we thought the flag was on. Pittsburgh and Matt just completed a beautiful pass down the middle of the Stevens right on like the two yard line. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like 14, 10 at the time. We're like, Oh, let's go. Like here, here it is. Now we take over. Now we do what we always do. And uh, they called it back for the holding. And then like a play or two later, the next call that I have a problem with was when they pass through the interception, they run up the sideline. Hass makes one of the most beautiful tackles I've ever seen in any game, but especially in the biggest game. And he goes through a guy right around like the thigh boards to get to the, uh, the the guy that was running the ball back on the sideline, and they throw the flag and give another fifteen for block below the waist. All right. And so like those two were really you know like Djax the push off the or push -off whatever was bad. Yeah. I, you know they were going back and forth, so I we didn't even like care. We were like yeah. just keep going, keep going. But yeah, that that's you know what stood out to me. I remember going through. I want to say it was late in the first quarter, or early in the second quarter. I don't know why I remember this, but you guys on defense had given up like 17 yards, and then there was that reverse that came back the other way, and then who was the safety that stepped on the on the uh, marker and blew his groin out? Oh, Marquan Manuel. Marquan Manuel. Yeah. Yeah, and that and it seemed like that was kind of where everything just kind of got unhinged. A little the, bit. The play that stands out the most, and I thought, you know, Heinz Ward had a great game, but Antoine Randall, I mean, yeah. he threw that pass, but the play that never gets brought up, thank God, I don't want to have to watch more highlights of that game. <laughs> when Kelly Hernan picked that ball off and went 75 yards the other way, it was a huge interception. Um, Antoine Randall is standing by the goalpost. If you look at the, the beginning of the film, he goes straight down the middle. And then takes a like a ninety degree angle left and and makes the tackle and yeah. otherwise it's a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, Two oh six is asking: Was Coach Carroll much different from college to pro? Exactly the same. Maybe a little more energy. Surprisingly, I don't know how, but <laughs> he yeah. All the speeches, the the prep, everything, um, and it was cool to see that it was. That's just who he is and how he goes about um, running the show. You keep in touch with with Pete. I text him from time to time. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting seeing him. But as far as you know, what they're doing with Mike McDonald, and you know, I don't know if you thought that was going to be who that they were they were going to hire, but they seemed very determined uh, about that. But um, you know, as far as like hiring other guys, what do you think? How important is this? You know, the offensive coordinator. Do you are you getting kind of antsy? Like maybe they should have their their roster of coaches filled out yet or I mean I, I trust in the process I, I believe that John went about it you know the right way um, diligently and making sure he got who he wanted and then is now trying to form the relationship that kind of, not that him and Pete had to a T but just try to make this right and make it work and so just discuss it and uh, land on some guys but um, yeah combines in like three weeks two and a half weeks yeah so so we got to make some decisions soon. Hey, uh, 509 says, Lofa, how did you prep yourself to get into that mindset of playing with absolutely no fear? Oh, good question. Um, I was just born this way. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I've never been afraid of anything in my life. No, I, I failed and failed and failed. And I learned every time I failed. 
you know, how to do it better. How to like when I first I failed to get a Division One scholarship when I left high school. Um, Would you go to Maine? Was it? Hey, whoa, hey, give me a little more respect on no, that. No, on no, that. no. Maine. Was... <laughs> <laughs> well, like, no, where did you? Maine. It Ugh. wasn't a very well-known program. Um, no, we made it well-known. We, we went to the okay, playoffs. Okay, it was Maine. Uh, it, yeah, it was Maine. Yeah. No, I think that's. I think it adds to the to, to the lore. Yeah. yeah. To me, but, I, what, I always so, brag about my high school football team. <laughs> hey, KP, we we kicked ass too. Uh, no, but. You know, I failed, and I kept learning through the process. It's a process, and you, and then through the prep, you build confidence, and it, just over and over. It's monotonous, but you find a way to love the work and um, and find your edge. But everybody wanted me to play quarterback when I was leaving high school. I was a quarterback and middle linebacker in high school. Quarter- I was only quarterback because well, I wasn't good. Whoa. <laughs> Easy, Bob. <laughs> uh, I was. I was only quarterback because one of my best friends had quit to just focus on basketball. And so they were like, well, you know, who can remember the plays and, and execute? And I was like, I can do that. You know, I had a good arm, but I mean, still even hard to see over the line at 5'11. Yeah. <laughs> but so when everybody, all the coaches come to visit me, like three Division One scholarships, this is all I had. I had three Division One scholarships for quarterback and one at linebacker, one double A for Maine. And so I asked all the, because I wanted to play D1. I didn't know if the NFL was promised. I asked all these coaches, I was like, if it if I don't win the starting job as a freshman, which they laughed at, <laughs> can I flip over and play middle linebacker? And they were like, No. I was like, Okay, well, you know, thanks for your time. I'm I'm going to Maine. And so mm-hmm. I went there. Jack Cosgrove, he had a vision for me. He's like, I, I believe you can play at this line. I know you can play at division one. And um, I went there for a year, and then I decided to transfer. And that's when I went to Southern Cal. The USC, yeah. And you were second-round draft choice, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty amazing. I always used to say, yeah, Lofa and I both were second-round draft choices, and that's where the similarities end. Oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, quickly, before the break, uh, 907 in Alaska asking, would Lofa, what would Lofa think about Pete being the coach at UCLA? No. No. Please, no. Why, why would you ask that? I I'm telling you right now, if Pete goes back to college, it doesn't matter. You could put him anywhere, any division. He will provide a championship run. I don't know if they'll win the championship, but within the first three, four years. Hmm. Because it's gotten – he no one's going to out-recruit him. Maybe Dion. That's probably the only one that has a chance. Yeah. When – it's just incredible. The classes that he brought through uh, when I was there at SC, when we were in our, our – good, and even the classes after. But – um you know, you got to win at recruiting, and you're not going to beat him. Yeah, you know, we, yesterday we were listening to Jed Fish talking about, um, you know, uh, I guess we got to go to break here. We'll, we'll make it quick, Lofa. But as far as like when you went into co- college, do you do you remember anybody talking about the NFL? Because Jed Fish was kind of selling the NFL, and you know, saying, "Hey, this is a program." I mean, I just thought it felt like a universe away from me when I was in in high school. No, but that's something I would have loved to have heard, yeah. you know, if I was a recruit. I mean, again, I wasn't recruited. So <laughs> yeah. if anybody just recruited me, I would have been grateful. But, um, <laughs> you know, I think that's the those are the players you, you want. Like, so if, like, you're talking NFL and the kid's not really paying attention or listening, I mean, that's kind of giving you information about are you recruiting the right guy. Yeah. Because you want guys with that long-term goal and vision in mind. 